Network presents Football Time. Hey, and welcome to the Football Time Show. It's NFL Week One. We're out of the college. The NFL season is upon us, and with us, as always, is Achilles Rain. Opening week. Are you ready to get into some NFL picks and bets for NFL Week One? Uh, listen, after the way things kind of went yesterday, I'm not sure if I'm ready for anything. Although I did see it coming. I, I do have that to defend myself with. Well, you should just be happy they got 10 because they probably should have gotten zero. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> All right. So let's dive right into it. Let's talk about Thursday night's game. Um, you know, I, I think earlier in the week, I, I thought the Rams line was a pretty good line for the Rams. But I think as it got later and later, I started to hedge more towards Buffalo because they'd come out with a, a little bit more in, energy and probably want in, in this game. And, and that's sort of how it turned out. That and the Rams offense just played really, really bad. I, I don't know how much of that was Buffalo defense. I don't know how much of that was bad Rams offense. Uh how do you think the game played out uh, for your uh, Los Angeles Rams here? Listen, unfortunately, it didn't play out exactly how I thought it would, but it did kind of follow the trend that I thought it would, which is, you know, after a Super Bowl uh, and you have that first game where they're hanging up the banner and everyone's taking pictures and they're doing autographs and other, you know, players from former players come start showing up and you have this whole atmosphere of kind of reliving the moment. Uh, a lot of these guys lose track of the fact that you're going to play a game in a couple of minutes and your mindset should be focused on that. So it's one of the reasons why I kept talking about throughout the week with, you know, with uh, some of the other coworkers at, at our nine to five about I, I kind of saw a loss coming, but I, I did not see, uh, you know, whooping that we saw last night. And I don't want to take anything away from Buffalo. But I think uh, a part of it was also the Rams just not being uh, mentally focused and ready for that game. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I didn't think um, overall the Rams, other than the I thought defensively they played pretty solid. Uh, you know, they gave up a, a couple big plays, but, you know, Buffalo's going to get their, you know, 24 to 30 points every single game no matter what. They did manage to get five turnovers. Uh, you know, the only like long term thing I, I think I can see uh, Rams wise that would concern me, which is sort of one of the concerns I had coming into the season was offensively. They're, they're really limited weapons wise. It, it, it's basically Cooper Cup and, you know, you, your running game, you got okay runners I, I you probably say league average runners and acres in Henderson, uh, the line. I think, you know, we knew there'd be a, a little bit not as good a line as there has been in the past. I, I think you saw a little bit of that last year. I think it continues this year. And, and I just worry, uh, without Odell Beckham there to sort of stretch the field, it's going to be a, a little bit like that where it's we have to force everything to Cooper Cup. We both have talked a, a couple different times about Allen Robinson and if he's a good fit here. He didn't even, I, other than one little catch, he didn't even look like he was in the game. So are, are your concerns also uh, that sort of stuff on the offensive side of the ball, or do you think they'll sort of find a way? I, I, I don't think the offense will be bad. It'll sort of find a way, especially versus poor teams. But I think top-level teams like the Bills, who can rush the passer like that, has a secondary like they do. It's just going to be difficult to sort of force the ball every time into Cooper Cup. You even saw it in the Super Bowl. Basically, until that last series, they couldn't move the ball all that well because the only play was to force the ball to Cooper Cup. And then that last series, they were able to force the ball into Cooper Cup. So do those concerns sort of uh, bring to you a long-term effect this season as well? Well, listen, first of all, I'm going to say this. I think the Rams are going to be okay. You know, just to point things out, this is the first time since Sean McVay has been the head coach of the Rams that they've had a losing record. This is the first time. So it goes to show just the culture that he's built, uh, you know, with the Rams organization. So I'm not too worried about that long term. Uh, I do have some concerns, though. 
I don't think that, you know, I can really put uh, Allen Robinson's performance on him, solely on him. Uh, I think that a lot of it has to do with the offensive line. We knew that, you know, with the retirement of Whitworth, that there was going to be a couple of holes there. I know No Bloom stepped up, but he's not Whitworth. You know, he's not there yet. And, and the the rest of the offensive line is not there yet. They're not meshing quite, quite well. I mean, that Bills, I know the Bills defense got a lot better during the offseason. But, man, they were getting to uh, Stafford. I'm talking about within, you know, under two seconds in certain plays. So a lot of it had to do with the Bills' D-line being really good, the Rams' O-line not being that good, um, and just not having time. I think that's one of the reasons why we saw everything pretty much being forced to Cooper Cup. Um, You're going to have situations where Stafford's going to need to do those no-look throws uh, like he attempted last night. But you're also going to have that come back and bite you in the behind. I mentioned in our previous, uh, you know, uh, prop bet show that I really like Stafford to lead the league well, in interceptions. Case, so, <laughs> I, I mean, listen, I, I was sitting there and I was, I was kind of bummed out. I, even though I had a feeling the game was going to go the way it did, I was kind of bummed out watching it live. But in the back of my head, I was like, "Yeah, I told you about those picks. I told you." And I, I can see more coming, especially if the offensive line is going to keep playing the way it is. Um, you know, really quick on that Allen Robinson uh, situation, I saw a tweet earlier today where it said, uh, "Here's a breakdown of Allen Robinson's highlights." You know, in his opener with the Rams, and the video literally just ended. It said, "Thanks for watching." Uh, I thought that was kind of funny, but. Yeah, I'm not too worried long term. You know, the Rams have a history of starting off slow, uh, not this slow, but they were going up against what a lot of people, uh, you know, are uh, basically crowning the uh, the Super Bowl champs prior to the season being played out. So I, I think that Super Bowl hangover, you know, uh, everybody's head wasn't in the right place and going up against a really, really good Bills team. Um, I think it's just a recipe for disaster, but I look for them to get it together uh, going into next week and we'll see what happens. Yeah, long term, I, I don't. Look for the Rams record-wise. The offense just, I I think I had trepidations going in a little bit, and you sort of watch that, and and you see it a little bit. Now, maybe Robinson finds his form. The, The weird thing about Robinson is he's not one of those receivers that, you know, bolts wide open he's one of those receivers that always has a defensive back on his back he just uses his body and frame his size and, yeah. yeah and catches the ball and it's one of those things where does stafford yet trust you know to force the ball in there even though he's covered but not covered you'd sort of say i i sort of liken him to you know like des bryant not at the beginning, but towards that very end, the last couple of years at Des, where he'd never be open, but you'd still just sort of throw the jump ball over there because he still had that big body and big frame. If they could find that, I think they'll be, you know, they'll find a little bit more rhythm, but it's how long does that take before Stafford trusts sort of forcing the ball into, you know, something that looks like coverage, but it's not really coverage uh, to Allen Robinson because he can sort of shield and protect and, catch the ball that way you know what really threw me off is i was building a a, you know single game parlay and um one of the things i took i actually uh i gave up some points uh i actually took took the line down to the rams plus 10 and a half i figured that they would lose the game but i thought that they'd keep it within at least 10 um obviously they got blown out but i almost uh you know placed uh cam Akers in my parlay and I'm, I'm kind of glad that I did it, but I also didn't see it. I mean, I don't think anyone really got a heads up about Daryl Henderson really kind of uh, taking the majority of the snaps there. Well, I did because I had the under uh, 900 yards for the season for Cam Akers, which is looking pretty good because I, I think he ended up with like two carries there. So uh, Yeah, it, and he didn't look good. He didn't look good either. Uh, I don't know. Maybe something's up with him, but uh, going forward, I think it's going to be an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, anything on the Bills? Uh uh, Josh Allen looked freaking ridiculous. Uh, one of those picks was totally not his fault. Uh, that's where interceptions get a little weird, where McKenzie basically hands them all to the linebacker. But my God, did Josh Allen uh, look really, really good. Oh, he looks just like he left off last season. Uh, I mean, it's almost like every single time they had a possession, I felt like they were by, they were going to drive it down and score. If it wasn't for a few lapses on the offense, like you said, he probably would have had a perfect game. I mean, 
that Bills team is is crazy yeah. good, and, and I can see why everyone was crowning him champions before the season. Yeah, even started. I mean, you you look at it; those you got four receivers in Davis, Diggs, uh, McKenzie, and Crowder. Then, uh, honestly, I thought that backfield looked pretty good too. Uh, Zach Moss looked like he was finally running with a purpose. Yeah. And, you know, Singletary seemed to find a, a little bit of his form, you know, catching out of the backfield, finding seams and running. Uh, I know Cook fumbled on the, uh, you know, uh, his first carry of the season, which sort of put you behind the eight, Paul. But they just are deep and ridiculous. And even the line, I thought, looked pretty good, which would probably be the one question mark on the Bills' uh, offensive side of the ball. Yeah, I was really concerned about their secondary, but, you know, it seemed like they were pretty much going in and out of the nickel defense pretty much all night long, and, yeah, those two and they held up. Uh, held they up. held up, man. And then, I mean, I know I know you look at Cooper Cup's numbers and you're like, yeah. held up. But listen, Cooper Cup's going to do his thing regardless of, of who you're playing against, but I, I was impressed they were able to shut everyone else down. I think uh, overall it was a really good game for the entire Bills team. Yeah, I, I think that uh, AFC East, uh, any dreams that – the Dolphins thought <laughs> about uh, peaking up. I, I don't think they're quite on that level. We'll see what they uh, do this week. But uh, wow, uh, that was really, really impressive by the Bills there. Uh, they, if they can stay healthy, it, it could be an interesting uh, ride here. All right, let's get into the games uh, left to uh, let's start out down south and let's go New Orleans. First, the Atlanta Falcons. This is uh, a five and a half point line here this is an interesting game because i i just i don't think we know what to make of the saints we know they have good players but as we talked about in our preview the two most important positions that you look at they have very large question marks in dennis allen and uh you know Jameis winston they go to Atlanta, are five-and-a-half-point favorites. How do you see this game playing out uh, for you? You know, I, I'm kind of expecting at least a little bit of what we saw last season from New Orleans, at least defensively, uh, because they do have a lot of the same weapons that return. I know they lost a couple, but um, the first thing I looked at when I was looking at this game was the injury report. Uh, I believe for New Orleans, Trey Quan Smith, the wide receiver, uh, and then they have a couple tackles, Young and Owen, who are a little banged up. They're questionable for the game. Uh, while Atlanta is just um, Drake, the receiver, and uh, their cornerback, Hall, were the only ones that were reported as questionable. Um, you know, look at the last five games before the season ended last year. Uh, New Orleans went 4-0, 3-0 in the division. Uh, Atlanta went 2-3, 1-1 in the division. And they just couldn't really get it together. And I know that they were, they're you know, kind of uh, playing with their with their – now starting quarterback uh but i expect the uh, the falcons to be a little bit better than they were to close out the season last year but not good enough to beat this new orleans team especially with the defense plays at the level that we're used to i think a lot of it's going to have to do with james winston i think he's the big question mark here if he can play somewhat mistake free i mean we know he's got a history of throwing lots of interceptions if he can manage the game and just play like a true veteran then I think New Orleans is going to have no problem covering here. Yeah, I, I, I'm leaning a bit the other way just because I, I think the Falcons uh, won't quite be in tank mode yet. They'll, you know, they'll start the season, see what they can do. The other thing I was looking at was this 43 number. I, I, I think people think this might be a little bit of a shootout, but I, I think this has a chance to be a defensive type game that really sort of has both teams trying to hold possession because they both don't totally trust your offense, which is a little weird, you think, with the Saints, with the weapons they have. But uh, I, I just I, I think they'll both be pretty conservative. So that's why I think this number is a little high uh, at five and a half. So I, I think the Falcons will at least come out and, and play pretty well and pretty hard here in, in this game. So uh, I, I lean a little bit towards the Falcons here. I got a couple bets on this game in, in this one. Um, we're going to go with the Atlanta Falcons plus five and a half for me for $250. Then I got a couple uh, prop bets. I got a lot of Kyle Pitts action. I got Pyle, Kyle Pitts plus 170 anytime touchdown. Kyle Pitts first touchdown scorer 11 to 1. And Kyle Pitts 13 to 1 for two plus touchdowns. And Pitts over 57 and a half yards receiving at 125 in this one. So I got a handful of action on the Atlanta side of the ball. Thinking Pitts will be able to 
really get a lot of dump offs off Mariota because uh, the last time we saw Mariota, basically that was his maneuver. Uh, check down, check down, check down. And there's probably not anybody better to check down to uh, than Kyle Pitts here. So I, I really like Kyle Pitts in this one. I, I just, I think New Orleans will win, but I think this might be a little bit closer than people uh, think at, at that five and a half number. Also, I think that to under might come into play, but I don't have a bet on it just because I don't have a great read on either of these teams. You know, speaking of first touchdown score, I, I kind of saw a picture of uh, of one you hit last night. Yeah, I know. We're off to a big start with the uh, <laughs> Gabriel Davis trick play. Anytime you can risk $10, I win $100. Always a good start. Now, I will say your Rams screwed me over in my little uh, three-team same-game parlay. And, and I know. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of when I was watching the game. I was like, well, that didn't hit. Yeah, I know. I was very angry. I put it down under the 50 number, and then they can't even get a score. And then I thought I was going to get it on the back end when Stafford had that other turnover, and then Moss did the stupid uh, fumble there at the end that uh, screwed me over, and then everybody just decided they wanted to go home and didn't put any cheap scores on the board but you know start to the season with a, a first touchdown scored for that one not to keep going back to that game i know we're talking about the falcons right now but uh lux uh she, my wife she uh she she made a, a parlay um a prop parlay basically where she was going with uh cooper cup and um uh bills receiver i'm drawing a blank here Diggs, mckenzie uh, stefan Diggs, stefan Diggs, uh and she just needed one more catch from Cooper Cup, and she would have had a pretty nice payday, too. Uh, when she first made it, showed it to me. I was like, why would you make that kind of bet? And, uh, of course, uh, she was just one more catch from hitting it. That's so sad. Well, uh, you should have told your Rams to keep trying to score there the last two minutes. And instead of, uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they gave up. And the they, game over. <laughs> they gave up. They knew that game was out of reach. No, there's nothing they could have done. But uh, yeah. going back to this Falcons, I, I don't know, man. This five-and-a-half spread. I know it seems kind of large, but, you know, look at last season and, and this Saints team pretty much dominated this Falcon team. Uh, I know that historically they, they tend to play each other pretty well, and I'm a big believer in divisional opponents, but I think first game of the season, all the rust, you know, all the stuff you got to deal with. I just think the Saints are a slightly better team just, just based off firepower alone. So I kind of like the five and a half. I'm not taking it, but I, I kind of like it. Yeah, you and uh... – Dynamite David, fans of the uh, uh, road <laughs> favorite. <laughs> when it's we, the Falcons. We should probably mention we're in the DraftKings uh, pickup contest and we asked for our top five picks. And our boy Dynamite David just unrolled like four straight <laughs> over touchdown road favorites to us. Uh, but mind you. He's also the guy that was trying to sell the Ram fan on taking the Rams last night. Uh, so that, that should tell you all you need to know. All right. Well, we'll stop teasing the dynamite. But uh, I must say there was an article sent later that day that showed the number of uh, percentage of touchdown point road favorites in the NFL that covered. But nonetheless, yeah, uh, Falcons plus five and a half for me. I, I think this will be a little bit closer uh, than we think, but uh, – Nonetheless, it'll be interesting to see where the Saints uh, lie uh, and, and sort of if they can get tent out of that uh, NFC South. All right, let's move on to the Baltimore Ravens. Seven-point favorites versus the New York Jets. Uh, the total sits at 44 here. Uh, there was mention that Zach Wilson was going to play, but then – uh, I don't know if they didn't like what they saw, but uh, they ended up, they're going to sit him for the first four weeks on the, uh, uh, you know, IR there so he doesn't get any playing time, which uh, somehow means Joe Flacco, still a professional quarterback in the NFL, not, not in the Canadian League, not in your uh, local uh, league in the city, but uh, a NFL quarterback, uh, Joe Flacco versus the Ravens. And uh, somehow this line has started to drop as well, which uh, we got it at seven and a half in our DraftKings contest. I saw it at seven today. And now looking, you can find it six and a half some places. Oh, um, I like that. This is now getting to the point where I'm a little bit more willing to go, uh, you know, Ravens here. I don't have it just because, uh, you know, how I mentioned about touchdown favorites on the road here. But, uh, what are people thinking, and why is money coming in on the Jets here? Uh, 
Is there some way you can convince me that the Jets are in this game somehow? I mean, listen, I, we both mentioned how we really like the way they drafted this offseason and their acquisitions are in free agency, but I don't think either of us are ready to say that these guys are contenders just yet, especially with Zach Wilson being out for the first four weeks, as you mentioned. Uh, looking at their injury report, I mean, Zach Wilson's out. Uh, Dwayne Brown, their their offense tackles, uh, he's questionable. Um, their cornerback, uh, Harders, uh, is questionable. Another offense, McDermott's questionable. Um fans questionable they've got a ton of offensive linemen that are questionable and even if they do play (laughs) even and even if they do play i mean you know there's a reason why these guys are in the injury report week when there's something that's ailing them you know i'm saying so going up against this ravens team which i mean until lamar jackson got hurt we're we're pretty much on fire uh i don't see a, a scenario where they can cover uh six and a half point spread i had it at minus seven yeah um and, and I was tempted to take it. I, I even wrote a little note that says, with all the interestingly, cautiously, Baltimore minus seven. But um, I ended up not taking any action on this game. But at six and a half, I could definitely jump yeah. on that. If this stays six and a half and I can find it at one of my books at six and a half, that starts to pique my interest because it comes off those key numbers. And I, I just, I'm trying to think how the Jets are scoring here. Uh are they running the ball on the Ravens? I don't foresee that. Uh, I, I don't foresee how they're going to pass the ball on the Ravens, even if the Ravens' secondary was a little bit, uh, you know, down last year. But a lot of that had to do with injuries. Uh, with Joe Flacco back there at quarterback, it just – I don't see a lot of points being scored. And then the Jets' side of the ball on defense, yes, you can convince me that uh, the defense can hold up, but – I don't think they can hold up for four quarters. I think that uh, Baltimore Ravens offensive line is just going to pound on them and run on them, run on them, run on them. And then by the, you know, late in the third, fourth quarter, they're going to start hitting big plays and this lead will start to grow. So maybe it's like a 13-6 game going into the fourth, but I I, I think by the end uh, of the game, it's, you know, 24-6, you know, 27-6, 27 13 uh that type of thing so one bet you might look at is uh looking into the second half and fourth quarter type bets uh maybe in game and, and stuff like that so uh i don't have any of those but uh i just i'm stunned that uh people are aggressively uh you know taking the jets here and moving this uh number uh down and down and down uh it, it just a little bit confusing uh, certainly once joe flacco got Name the quarterback. I figured this number would go up, and we'd have an advantage uh, when we were talking about it on our uh, DraftKings Super Contest pick, and it turns out that it's going down, which uh, just is confusing. So uh, any wagers on this game for you? You know, I didn't have one, uh, but at, I'll tell you what, I'm going to parlay this one real quick, and I'm just going to put $500. Uh, I'm going to do a uh, minus six and a half and I'm going to take the under in this at, at 44. So I'm going to parlay those two things that gives me plus two sixty four odds. Uh, I think that there's, I think there's a good shot at this. Yeah. Uh, I, I got two uh, little player plays here. Uh, Rashad Bateman plus one sixty anytime touchdown uh, at sixty two fifty for me, and then Rashad Bateman first touchdown plus 900 for me at sixty two fifty. Uh, You know, nothing on the game yet, but uh, like I said, if this number trends down six and a half, and then I certainly will be keeping an eye on it in that uh, third, fourth quarter. If maybe we have a a close game or closer than we think, and I can hop on a a favorable line for the Ravens there. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. I I think we're both... uh, Pretty excited to to see how this game uh, plays out. Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> versus the Cincinnati Bengals here. Uh, six and a half point line is where the sits here for Cincinnati. Total is at 44 and a half. I, I know we both uh, really like Pittsburgh here. Um, what is your thinking here on the Pittsburgh Steelers getting six and a half points here on the road? Honestly, it sounds really favorable, okay? But I just can't see myself picking against the Bengals after how hot they got. In my opinion, they got better. They fixed some of the holes they had last season. Uh, but even though as much as I like the Steelers and, and as much as I think they're going to be better this season, 
I just can't bring myself to take it. So I got no pick in this one, but I kind of think that that Steelers plus six and a half is pretty good. Yeah, I, I definitely like the uh, Steelers plus six and a half here. A couple things. Uh, this game is pretty much close, no matter what the teams are uh, routinely every single year, certainly on the opening week. I, I think that's what gives me more opening week. You're making the Bengals almost a touchdown point favorite here versus Steelers team who's, you know, maybe there are a lot of question marks on the offensive side of the ball. I, I get that. But defensively, I don't think there are a lot of question marks there. Uh, I think they'll be able to slow down the, the Bengals a little bit and keep their team in the game. This is always a smash mouth game, and I just think six and a half points for this Steelers team is ridiculous. And the other thing is, you know, I, I think they're factoring in that the Bengals line will be better because they brought in some guys. But why would we believe that till we see it? That's not just because you bring in offensive linemen doesn't mean that they are going to be cohesive or they'll be as good as they were the year before. So that's something where I want to see, certainly along a Steelers defensive line, which has been able to get after you um, probably since the beginning of football existed in the 1930s for the uh, Pittsburgh team. So it just... Six and a half seemed like a lot. This is one of my uh, straight bets overall. I got the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers plus six and a half, 250 here. I just, I think this will be a close game. Uh, I also looked uh, a little bit at the uh, uh, fun little prop of will this game go to overtime. It didn't quite have the uh, long shot odds that I wanted, but uh by Sunday, when I'm feeling a little frisky and uh, a little more loose <laughs> with the cash, that might be a, a Sunday where I just say, oh, it's just $10. I might throw it on, on there. Uh, if you remember last year, uh, Cincinnati went to overtime uh, in their game uh, versus, uh, I think it was Cleveland they played, uh, and that was week one. This game tends to go into overtime a lot. I, I recall two seasons ago, a three, four overtime game, uh, possession game there. So uh, I, I really, really think uh, this one's six and a half, a gem to take these six and a half points. I got a couple other uh, player props in this one. Uh, Pickens, uh, plus 270 anytime touchdown. Uh, I, I don't know how much run he'll get with the depth at wide receiver early on. But I do think they'll definitely have a goal line package for him uh, with his sort of size and speed. So I, I, I really like that. And then one of the Cincinnati Bengals new acquisitions, Hayden Hurst, uh, you know, with all those receivers on the outside, I think he down at the goal line might be able to get freed up as they sort of look to cover Chase and uh, cover Boyd, uh, you know, and maybe Hurst can grab one. So Hurst, anytime touchdown, plus 240. So three bets on this game for me. Steelers, plus 6.5, 250. Pickens, plus 270, anytime touchdown. And Hurst, plus 240, anytime touchdown for me. Uh, anything for you? You said you didn't like anything in this one. No, well, I, I, like I said, I really like the Pittsburgh getting, Pittsburgh getting the points. But I just can't bring myself to, to put any money on this one. So uh, I'm a no-go for this one. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to uh, New England Patriots uh, plus three and a half versus the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I, I will admit we, we ended up, this was one of our super contests, one of our five. Um, and then sort of re-going over uh, stuff last night and tonight. I don't know why I had in my head two and a half. Uh, but when I, I, I looked and saw the three and a half, I'm a little bit nervous at this number now. Now, I, I will say, uh, with the games that we were trying to decide on the last couple, you know, those three games that we were trying to weed off, I do think the Dolphins have the best chance to blow this game out and make the number not even matter. But honestly, that hook on that three and a half, makes me a little bit more nervous. How do you think this play game plays out? Uh, you know, the Dolphins have been a bugaboo team for the Patriots uh, the last, you know, 10 years. Uh, I don't know if that works anymore when the Dolphins are now uh, favored over the Patriots. That seems to work better when the Patriots are always favored to win the division and the Dolphins are always favored to finish third and fourth. How do you see this game playing out? 
Listen, I kind of expect Miami here to uh, to take the reins and uh, and give it to New England. Now, uh, wife is going to hate me for saying this, but I don't think New England is going to be as good as they've been in years past. And even when they were really good, as you mentioned, Miami's kind of always had their number. It's just kind of a thing they do. It kind of reminds me of uh, San Francisco and L.A. Um, even when the Rams were good and the Niners were trying to build what they have now, they still had their number, and that's kind of the way I look at this. Uh, you know, go back to last season, Miami, 4-1. and one, uh, Their only loss came to Chicago, of all teams, uh, in a game where Tula was held under 100 passing yards, uh, where New England is 2-3. and three. Uh, They did beat Buffalo, which Buffalo came back and, and beat them back. Uh, and their only other win is against Jacksonville. So doesn't look too good for a team that started off really hot and then kind of uh, dropped off the cliff. Uh, and, and I've kind of expect a little bit more of that. So I, you know, I wish I could show you my notes. You mentioned that three and a half hook scaring you a little bit um, on my notes. I didn't take a pick in this game, but it says at the end where I would put my pick a little timidly, but if I had to pick, I like Miami minus three and a half. Yeah. I, I think I would have been very more aggressive if I had my two and a half number. And then I looked oh, yeah. at alternate lines to drop it off that key number. And uh, that, that was not good value. I know. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I must say, so uh, so that one went by the wayside. I, I was I was like, it was three and a half. I was like, I thought it was two and a half. And then I was like, eh, I don't like it as much now. So I crossed it off and then I went, all right, let's see what the alternate line is to drop it down to, you know, two and a half and get that win. And I was like, oh, that's like 160. That's not great value there. You might as well just take the money line at uh, that point. So yeah, nothing much. I, I really am. Uh, curious to see what this Dolphins offense looks like. Uh, they did beat the Patriots twice uh, last year, so, you you know, you're, you're starting out good there if you want to take the Dolphins. And like I said, I, I still think uh, of blowout games, the Dolphins have the best chance to come out and, you know, just put it on these Patriots. The Patriots have always sort of started slow towards the season, too. So that's the other thing you factor here. It, it was just that three-and-a-half number scared me. I got two plays in this one. Uh, Jalen Waddell, anytime touchdown, plus 160 uh, for 62.50. And then uh, Mac Jones, interception uh, for me is minus 110. So uh, I think Mac gets pressured here. With the good corners that Miami has, he gets a pick. So I got 125 on a Mac Jones interception on that game. So uh, no gameplay for me on this one, uh, but certainly uh, uh, a couple props. Uh, the only other thing, this number sits at 46 and a half. Uh, we know last year the Patriots were pretty good at uh, playing an under here. I wanted to go under here, but does that uh, sort of Dolphins firepower scare you off a little bit too much on this 46 and a half number? A little bit, but, you know, New England, they have one thing. They have the ability to play defense. We know that Bel Belichick's teams usually play pretty good defense. So maybe, but I don't know, man. I, I think that week one, there's just so many unknowns. I, I, I'd feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. And uh, Matt Patricia calling plays. I don't know. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know, the, the man was a defensive coordinator for the Patriots the last time out. And now he's calling offensive plays. So uh, I, I don't know. Uh, probably stay away from the total. But uh, 46 and a half seemed like a lot uh, for a Patriots game who I think will still come out conservative. And, and then the Dolphins, you know, sort of have that. A Shanahan style offense, so they're going to run the ball a lot. So I, I think the game will be short and quick. Uh, so maybe an underplay there on the uh, 46 and a half. All right, let's move on to our next game. I don't know. This one should be fun because I think both you and I have stepped out on a limb here. Jacksonville Jaguars at the Washington Commanders. The Washington Commanders, three and a half point favorites. Um, I don't know if we can give a good description of why we like Jacksonville here. Um, you know, other than maybe the upgrade. Urban Meyer's gone. <laughs> yeah, that would be it. Travis ATN comes back. But uh, I think this is more of a play of why the hell are the Washington commies three and a half point favorites? Um, you know, is there any way you can 
tell me Washington's going to be good here. I, I know last year we were pretty big on the Washington defense, but even that was a letdown. I look at the secondary, it hasn't improved. So I just think Jacksonville's a better team. Uh, you know, they didn't look at last year, but you start going player for player. I think Jacksonville's better. What What are you thinking here? That's exactly what I'm thinking. And even then, uh, you know, all the turmoil and everything going on with the uh, Washington organization here, um, it just kind of makes me feel like, you know, take away all the bad things as far as coaching from last season from Jacksonville. And they've got a pretty decent team. They beat some pretty good teams when they did win games uh, with very few in between. But I felt like they showed spunk. And not just that, I think a lot of us are still – believers that Lawrence is going to turn it around and, and show why he was one of the most coveted picks in the, in the draft. Um, I don't know, man, I, I I'm with you. I, I know it sounds really weird to say, but I think it's more of a, not a disdain, but a, a disappointment with Washington than it is. And in like being enamored with Jacksonville, um, that at least that's how I think. Yeah, definitely. So the other thing is here, you know, I, I guess Washington gets the uh, favored sort of thing uh, because they're at home, but Washington hasn't had home field in, I don't know, 20 years, basically since they moved out of, uh, you know, the old RFK stadium and, and moved into the one that they have not even actually in Washington, D.C. So basically I, I think, this stadium will be empty. If you, if you want to go on resale value, you can get tickets for about $20. That That's uh, how limited, uh, you know, this. I don't think the Smokies tickets are that cheap. <laughs> so if you would like to go to the Jacksonville Jaguars, Washington commies game, uh, you are more than able to pretty cheaply. Uh, so I just think it'll be a barren stadium because I don't know that Jacksonville fans will really travel all that much. So that levels off any home field advantage here. And I just think Jacksonville's going to be a better team. I, I don't think they're going to be a great team, but I, I think you'll start to see things turn around. I mean, they've had a top five pick for six years in a row here. So uh, at some point, I think that talent has to start to level out a, a bit here. So like I said, Jacksonville plus two and a half for me, $500 on that one. One of my big plays of the week's Jacksonville plus two and a half on this one. Uh, Trevor Lawrence plus 450 anytime touchdown. I, I think Doug Peterson will start to utilize him a little bit like they do Josh Allen. That's, that's a big athletic body that you can basically run, and he's bigger and faster than a lot of the defensive guys. So why not utilize that a, a little bit more? So I like that plus 450 anytime touchdown. Now, of course, that's not passing. That has to be a rushing or receiving touchdown or I, I guess a defensive touchdown if Trevor Lawrence is uh, playing the defensive side of the ball would suffice as well. But uh, uh, anytime touchdown plus 450. And then I got two Travis ATN uh, props as well. Uh, over 21 and a half receiving yards, minus 120. And then uh, Travis Etienne, over three and a half receptions. I thought that one was a little bit spiked. Uh, I, I was hoping it'd be down to two and a half, but it's not juiced. It's at plus 125. So I think, you know, dump downs, I, I think Travis Etienne might get to round three or four of those. So I went over on the three and a half receptions, plus 125 on that one. I've got just one play, and my one play is literally uh, – I was looking at the at the spread for um, – Jacksonville plus two and a half pays out at minus 110. If you feel that they're going to win and, and you just want to take it as a straight up bet, why not take Jacksonville money line? It gives you plus 115 odds. Yeah. At that point, you're at least getting something else on the back end. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting 350 on Jacksonville money line. Yeah. Keep that in mind as I go over my parlays at the end of the uh, show because that one might uh, pop right back up there. I, I saw that value as well, and I, I was like, that's not uh, all that bad there. So we're yeah. both very heavy on the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road. <laughs> it's kind of so, scary, man. So, uh, <laughs> heavy on that, and I, I think we both are the ones that convinced Dynamite David to ride the Jacksonville <laughs> Jaguars in our pickup contest too. So, uh, 
<laughs> what could go wrong uh, taking Jacksonville on the road here? At least they're getting points and not favored like last year when they went to that, Houston. That's what I was going to say. I said, as we're, taking, we're taking road dogs, not road favorites. All right, let's move to the San Francisco 49ers versus the Chicago Bears. San Francisco 49ers, seven and a half point favorites. Um, I... I I don't know what you could give me that the Bears are going to compete in this game. They are at home. That that would be about all I'd look at. But I just thought this spread was a little elevated, you know, at seven and a half. So I didn't really have a ton of uh, action in this game because also the other thing is I, I want to see what the unknown is of Trey Lance before I, I start taking touchdown road favorites, uh, you know, real aggressively here, even if it's uh, of a team as poor as I think the uh, Chicago Bears are. So what do you make of this game here? Listen, uh, my big thing here is going to be what can Trey Lance do? And I know that they've got Jimmy G in the back burner, but I, I think that's what everybody's wondering. I think, you know, there's a lot of people that are crowning them to win the NFC at this point. And, and I don't understand why. I, like, I, I'm not a big fan of going into the unknown and just assuming, you know, this is this is it. Uh, but I, I want to see. I know we've had a little sample. I want to see it for an entire season. If he can stay upright, if he can play, if he can run the way that he's that he's shown flashes of, then I think the Niners are going to be okay. But uh, to me, it's still it's still big void of unknown. We don't know what we're getting from them. And um, for a spread, that, I know that the Chicago Bears aren't that good, but. Minus seven, uh, at least that's what it's currently sitting at, seven. I mean, for a guy who we really haven't seen him start, uh, you know, a year, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that this Niners team is a solid team, and I think that they're definitely contenders as long as the quarterback play remains somewhat to what we got last year from Jimmy G. Yeah, I I just – you got an unknown on the other side too. That, that's yeah, yeah. why it's just a total – takeaway it's i'm not touching uh you know fields and the bears and i'm not touching uh you know lance quite yet and the 49ers i want to see him blow a couple teams out and then if they do get rolling then i might start you know looking at him but certainly Listen, not to not to mention the fact that you know i know he's probably going to play but george kittle all yeah. of a sudden just popped up into the, you know, into the injury report. Well, imagine and, uh, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's got a history of injuries here, but, you know, you look at a, a guy who's getting his first official start to the season, uh, you know, who basically everybody's pretty much crowned the winners of the NFC and, and uh, that pressure. How's he going to handle all that stuff? How's he going to handle the guy who took him to a Super Bowl and a playoff spot, uh, NFC championship game, sitting on the bench, just waiting for him to to either fail or get hurt. Uh, I mean, that kind of stuff for a young guy, you would think it could affect him, but we'll see what he's got. We'll see what he's really, you know, uh, what he really brings to the table here during this game. Because if if you could pick any game to start off with for your first NFL career with uh, or first starter, you know, as a, as the actual starter, uh, with the guy who led your team to a Super Bowl and an NFC championship game, I think the Bears will be probably a favorable matchup. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, but it's a wait and see. I, I got one bet on this game. Uh, Trey Lance, anytime touchdown, plus 175. In the uh, mm. limited reps that we've seen, he n not only do they seem to call plays for him down there around the goal line, but he also seems to like to – that's where he likes to scramble and, and try to dive in. So uh, I think plus 175, pretty good value there at any time touchdown. So uh, I like Trey Especially Lance. if somehow Kittle doesn't play. Yeah, definitely so. So plus 175 uh, I thought was really good value anytime touchdowns. Anything for you on the uh, Niners-Bears game here? No, uh, this is more of a game I'm going to sit back and watch for my brother's sake. Uh, big Niner fan, and hopefully, uh, hopefully Lance is what they think he is. Yeah, definitely so. All right, let's move to another game I know both you and I liked. Uh, Cleveland Browns at the Carolina Panthers. Uh, this thing opened at two and a half, but uh, today when I started looking, I found it pick em at places. So uh, I, I don't know what the tape people are watching for the Cleveland Browns or they think Deshaun Watson is playing quarterback. Or, I don't know. But uh, Jacoby Brissett is playing quarterback. I suggest anyone to go back and look at Jacoby Brissett playing quarterback last year for the Miami Dolphins. So uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm all over Carolina here. I think Carolina, uh, you know, will win this game. I, I think Carolina, you, you start looking at the 
players on both sides. I think Carolina has just as many, you know, top uh, notch players uh, that receiving room with Moore and Anderson and they just brought in Lacavia Chenault that's three really good uh, different type receivers um, you know Christian McCaffrey is healthy that's the other thing that we know we're getting one game of healthy Christian McCaffrey uh, you know Baker Mayfield Say what you will about him. Upgrade over uh, Sam Darnold. They're at quarterback, plus he's playing for a contract. And then I guess people don't know or they don't remember or didn't pay attention, but Carolina's defense was really good last year. It, it was the yeah. offense that put them in bad situations. That defense returns uh, with the limitations that the Cleveland Browns offense is going to have. I just look for Carolina to roll here, but uh, people seem to still be hot on the Cleveland Browns. So uh, what do you make of this one? Yeah, I'll tell you what, even when the Panthers, I, I just looked at it right now and it is a pick, uh, but even when the Panthers were favored by two and a half, I still thought that it, it was uh, pretty much a gimme. I, I, and again, no disrespect to Cleveland and their fans and their organization, but I think the only the only shot that Cleveland has here is to play lights out defensively the way yeah. they played in a few games last season. Because I just don't see where their offense is going to come from. Um, they have no Deshaun Watson. He obviously suspended. Uh, their offensive tackle, Jack uh, Conklin, was, yeah. I think it's Jack Conklin. He's he's out. Uh, Jadavian Clowney, one of their most uh, uh, prolific defensive uh, players, he's out. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, don't, I really don't understand – what people are seeing here or why it's this close. Maybe I'm missing something, uh, but I'll tell you what, even for a pick em, I, I don't have a pick in this game, but I would probably parlay it with something to do with McCaffrey um, and, and try and, you know, and try to get some good odds on it. But uh, at minus 110 for a pick game, I think you can't go wrong. Yeah. So. The, the other thing is, even if this game is close, say it's, you know, a defensive struggle, both offensive have struggled and it's 10 10 13 13 does anybody trust Jacoby Bursett to drive them down and get them in a winning position I mean yeah. that's just not something I trust and at least Baker has done it in yeah, recent that's memory what I I mean you don't have a great option in Baker but it's a better option than what the Cleveland Browns have so yeah, if you're going to give me a pick straight up at home with Carolina here uh, over this Cleveland team, I mean, even with Deshaun Watson, I, I'm i not going to lie, I, I might lean uh, Carolina's way I, until I see what Deshaun Watson is. So, yeah, I, I'm all about Carolina here. This is probably my biggest play. I got uh, Carolina on the pick em at 750 for me. That's my biggest money play uh, of the week. I just... I can't believe people are taking the Cleveland Browns on the road with Jacoby Bursett at quarterback. I mean, even last year, they they had Baker at quarterback, and they weren't any good either. So why are they improved uh, from last year to this year? And they've gone to Jacoby Bursett at quarterback. So, uh, yeah, really confusing ab about this one. I changed my mind. I'm taking a pick here. Uh, I'm going to take the Panthers also. Uh, I mean, for a pick, uh, I'm going to put 250 on mine. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to the Indianapolis Colts versus the Houston Texans. Uh, this is another one. Huge road favorite. Eight and a half uh, for the Indianapolis Colts here. Uh, you know, this is a hard game to sort of handicap because I do think the Colts are a much better team. But you got a division game week one. I just, I'm not going to be one of those who's real aggressive on eight and a half points on the road, even if I do think Indianapolis is that much better uh, than Houston. Is there anything here in Indianapolis versus Houston that you think you lean one way or the other? It's just too big a spread for me, even if I do think Indianapolis probably wins this game 30 to 13. I mean, I can totally see where your hesitation is at, and, and, and I don't, you know, falls you for that. But I just don't see how the Colts don't win this game, especially with Matt Ryan, a, a more competent quarterback under center uh, than they had last year. I don't see how they don't, you know, win this game by multiple scores here. So I'm actually going to put 250 on the Colts minus seven. All right. You got the Colts minus seven. So you're going aggressive uh, after the Colts here. I just didn't, I didn't love anything about this. I, this is one of those where I, 
just scratch off pretty quickly. Now, I do got some player ones in this one. Uh, Pittman, anytime touchdown, is plus 105. Uh, the one I like is Mo Alley Cox. Uh, if you look at the Colts' uh, sort of receiving options, it's Pittman, and, th and then it's kind of bleak. So, uh, with Matt Ryan there, who has always been really, really big, uh, you know, throwing to tight ends throughout his career, I, I think Mo Alley Cox, pretty good value right off the start to the season. So, Mo Alley Cox, anytime touchdown, plus 195 uh, for me at 62.50. And then Mo Alley Cox, first touchdown is 11 to 1. So I think that's pretty good value too with uh, what we've seen from Matt Ryan throughout the years and throwing to tight ends. Really like that value. And then uh, David Smills, I got interception, uh, minus 145 on that one. Uh, I, I think this Colts defense and that front up there uh, sitting in their cover too, probably forced a turnover uh, from Davis Mills. So I think that's pretty good value. I got 125 on the Davis Mills uh, uh, interception as well. Uh, anything else on this game? Uh, it, any, uh, you know, maybe offensive life from Houston, I think that's where you have to look. Uh, you know, they do have a handful of skill position guys. If you think Davis Mills can play solid at quarterback, maybe they can score some points here, but I, I just don't buy it versus this Colts defense. I think that if you were going to take anything on the Houston side of the ball as far as like offensive th offensively goes, I think your best shot would probably be at Brandon Cooks getting loose for, for a touchdown. Uh, but that Colt defense, though, is pretty stout, and, and I don't expect it to deviate a lot from what they did last year, uh, and, and they did pretty good last season uh, with most wide receivers. So uh, I wouldn't put anything on it, but if you wanted to, I would say Brandon Cooks has scored any time touchdown, I think, uh, and offers decent enough value where you could at least uh, make a play and then watch your team and hopefully uh, make some money. Yeah, I, I'd be weary uh, of, from the uh, numbers I looked at of taking the uh, Pierce uh, kid for the Houston Texans, uh, rookie running back versus this uh, Indianapolis Colts front. His numbers were really, really bloated in the uh, individual props. Uh, if I was you, I, I'd be looking at unders in those. Anybody who thinks Pierce is going to get off to a really, really hot start here uh, versus the Indianapolis Colts, that's a pretty tough opening game. So I know everybody's really big on him in fantasy and thinking he's going to have a big year. But uh, I, I don't think this is the game where he kicks, starts it off, and, and, and really blows up. You know Brandon Cooks is plus 180 for an anytime touchdown score? Yes, I did see that. Uh, I, I, I saw that, and I, I, I definitely looked at it, but I, I was already pretty long on my anytime <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move uh, to an interesting one here. Philadelphia Eagles versus the Detroit Lions. Eagles minus three and a half. And uh, as uh, much love as we gave the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in our, uh, you know, NFL preview, um, I must say I looked at this game and then got scared off pretty quick. So uh, that says something. Honestly, uh, I, it just looks like a trap game. That three and a half number, opening week, Eagles on the road versus Detroit. I just, I didn't like the number. So I, I couldn't go aggressively on the Eagles quite yet at three and a half. Uh, so what do you make against this uh, game here? Because you also were really big on the Eagles on the NFC side of things. So what did you see when you saw this number at three and a half? Yeah, I'm really high on the Eagles this season. I really like what they did during the offseason, and I really like what they were building last season. Uh, you go back to last season, they were 4-1 and one to finish off the season. Their only loss came to the Cowboys in that 51-26 uh, pummeling. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the game where Jalen Hurts didn't play. Yes. Because they, they had their position locked up already. Uh, where you flip it onto Detroit side of the ball, they went 2-3 and three in their last five. Both of those wins, though, were impressively against Green Bay, uh, which I think was no Aaron Rodgers. Um, yes. And, and against Arizona, a team that was still playing uh, for position in the NFC West. Uh, their losses, though, were to Seattle, Atlanta, and a uh, banged-up Denver team. Uh, so those things alone, the history with the Lions uh, and how good I think the Eagles are going to be. You know, I know you got a little weary. What would you say, three and a half? Yeah, three and a half. 
Yeah, I've got I've got three hundred dollars on the Eagles minus four. So that tells you how how confident I feel about this Eagles team. That's not to say that it's a guarantee here, but uh, I, I do feel like this team is, is one of those teams that has really good potential to uh, open up some to open some eyes. So um, Eagles minus four for three hundred. Yeah, I, this might be one in like four, five, six weeks. I feel stupid for not grabbing the you know that three and a half number. Uh, you know when the Lions are zero and four, <laughs> and you know all the stupid, weird preseason Detroit Lions hype has uh, sort of been you know pushed down a little bit. Uh, I, I will say I do think defensively the Lions are in the okay to solid territory it's, offensively. I, I think there are still question marks. I think, you know, wide receiver wise, it's still really, really thin. So then you're looking at a lot, a lot of touches for Deandre Swift and, you know, Philadelphia Eagles wise defensively, uh, they did bring in some new secondary members, but, you know, much like we made the point about the Cincinnati Bengals and bringing in new offensive linemen, it's more, a uh, I would like to see the Philadelphia Eagles secondary be good before I, I trust them to be good. So, but I, I do think that, you know, front line of the Eagles and, and the linebackers will be able to get to golf and, and shut down that running game. And then I wonder where the lions will be. It's just that number. It might be the hook. I don't know. It, it just, it gave me pause that it, it might just be all the noise, too, because the Eagles are getting so much love, and then it would be very Eagles-like to then get blown out by the Lions, you know, in the opening week, and everybody's like, oh, the Eagles suck, and then, you know, the season plays out, and the Eagles are, you know, 12-4, and four, and everybody, you know, doesn't even remember week one. So I'm just sitting out of that one right off the bat, and we'll see what the Lions really are. I had two prop plays in this one. Uh, I, I mentioned DeAndre Swift. Two-plus touchdowns was plus 900. Uh, I, I talked about, you know, Lions' weapons. There aren't a lot, unless you still are in the Arma uh, Ross St. Brown love territory and TJ Hawkinstein. So I think Swift, pretty good value for two plus touchdowns at nine to one if the Lions are going to be in this game. And then the uh, Jared Goff interception uh, is uh, almost even at minus 115. Uh, if we know anything about Jared Goff, he's not a real fan of, of a real aggressive pass rush. You don't get much more aggressive than the Eagles pass rush. So I think golf will give us one here with that Eagles pass rush, uh, you know, getting to him and we get a, a throw. So 125 on uh, golf uh, interception thrown, uh, 62.50 on the two plus touchdowns for DeAndre Swift. You said uh, you were taking the uh, Eagles straight up in this one. Anything else uh, on that? I mean, I will say this, that um, if somehow the Lions are able to protect uh, Jared Goff a little bit and that secondary for the Eagles isn't meshing the way that, you know, everyone's assuming that they're going to. I, I do like, a, a, you know, a first touch, not a first touchdown, a anytime touchdown score for their tight ends. Jared Goff showed a lot of love to his tight ends, yeah. especially as the season closed out. Once he got back from his injury, he was showing a lot of love to the tight end position. And I think uh, last I looked, it was plus 175, if I'm not mistaken, for an anytime touchdown score at the tight end position. So I think there's some decent value there. But again, I'm not taking it because I think that uh, the Eagles are going to roll in this one. Yeah, definitely so. All right, let's move to one of the big games on the week. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders go to the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, the rematch from uh, Week 18 uh, and the showdown to get into the playoffs. The Raiders won that game in a, a ridiculous score fest. So, uh, Chargers, uh, of course, naturally are three and a half point favorites in a game they lost just six months ago. So, uh, break this one down for me. Chargers remain a three and a half point favorite. The total sits at 52. How do you think this game's going to go? I, okay, I'm probably in the minority here, okay? I know that uh, the Chargers are favored, and, and I think it's rightfully so. I think that even though the Raiders beat them last season for that playoff spot, I still think the Chargers are a better team. And I know that they've got some issues with their coaching staff uh, and, and that defense was nothing to write home about last season. But it, it seems like they added some veteran players. Uh, you know, you got Mac there. And, yes, he's not going to completely change the team because he's not the Mac that we used to uh, see back when he was with the Raiders, for example. But I, th I still think he's a solid player. And I just 
I know that, you know, everybody likes to, you know, uh, rave about Devontae Adams being the number one wide receiver, but we also haven't seen him perform an entire season without Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball. So uh, and there's another unknown. Um, I don't know, man. I, I really think that I think the Chargers are the smarter play here. I, I'm not taking a play here because uh, currently sits at three and a half. I, I don't like the hook. I, I, I do envision this being a tight game. These teams know each other really well, being divisional rivals. And, and I anticipate kind of a shootout. Uh, I think defense is going to be out the window, especially for this first game with all the rust and uh, you know, people getting ready for the season. So I, I like the Chargers in the tight one here, but I'm not taking anything. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sitting out mostly on this one. I, I just want to watch it and, and see what these teams do. I, I want to see if this Chargers defense uh, has put it together and improved. Uh, I, I want to see if the coaching has improved and, and we make you know, a handful of smarter decisions. So I don't want to lean Chargers that way. And, and then the Raiders, you know. I want to see what that offensive line looks like uh, versus a pass rush like the Chargers, you know, and Mac and Bosa and, and a handful of other guys, you know, along that line and, you know, in the secondary who can rush the passer. And, and then I want to see what the Las Vegas Raiders secondary is like. I, I think that's the biggest sort of thing that I want to see is how bad is this Raiders secondary. Along the defensive line, I think you could say the – Las Vegas Raiders are elite. You start getting into linebacker and then secondary, it gets weaker and weaker. And if that pass rush doesn't get there and you're giving Herbert time, does he start picking you apart and, and lighten up yards here? So I, I just, I can't be aggressive taking that three and a half on the Raiders, even though I probably would want to. So I'm just going to stay away. I had one play on this one, Justin Herbert over the 281 and a half yards. Uh, I do think even if that pass rush gets to him, that secondary is still weak with the amount of weapons that Chargers have in the backfield and on the outside. They're going to hit big plays. They're going to rack up yards. And if they do the Chargers thing they do where they get behind, then they're just going to start throwing every time in that fourth quarter, rack up yards. So I think that's a pretty good play. Justin Herbert over 281 and a half at uh, minus 115. So I have 125 on that. That's about all the play I have on this one just because – I think this is one of those week one games where you want to watch it and see what these teams are before you're real, real aggressive on beat, betting on either side. All right, let's go to the Green Bay Packers versus the Minnesota Vikings. Green Bay Packers, one and a half point uh, favorites right now versus the uh, Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I, I think this is another one where I, I sit out pretty much because I want to see what the Green Bay Packers are on offense without Devontae Adams. I want to see what the Green Bay Packers defense, which uh, looks like it will be elite, and how they're going to sort of play. Are they going to run the ball and be a conservative sort of defensive team? And then I want to see what the Vikings are they going to be this aggressive offensive team that they've sort of been hinting at all off season? And can you be that with Kirk Cousins as your quarterback? So uh, I'm sitting out a little bit uh, on this one as well, where it's a sort of wait and see. And uh, I, I, I will say, I do think this is sort of a must win for the Vikings. Uh, if this division, you want to contend it all. You need to win your week one home game versus this Packers team because if the Packers beat them on the road to start the season with the other teams in this division, I think the Packers sort of roll and sit and snooze to uh, this division win. So I, I look at this as a must win for the Vikings and a sort of show me game, but uh, I got no plays on it. Where are you looking at here in the uh, Green Bay Vikings? You know, I'll be honest with you. I've been going back and forth with this. I actually have it written down as a pick for me here. Um, but I don't know. Something something inside me just keeps – I have this very un, uneasy feeling about this game. Um, you talk about the the Packers. They're, they have uh, – Bakhtari, is that his name? The yeah. offensive tackle? He's questionable. Um, Tony and the tight end's questionable. Uh, Savage, the, uh, the 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 safety's questionable. Um, Lazard's questionable. I know that he's probably going to play, but I don't I don't know what this new look Packers team's going. And I know they still have Aaron Jones, and they've got a couple nice little weapons, you know, role players, but they don't have that guy. And, and I know that I've said it before that I think Aaron Rodgers is one of the elite quarterbacks that can turn average receivers into good receivers. But how long can that hold up for? 
you know, you can only do so much as a quarterback. We saw Josh Allen yesterday. He's putting the ball in perfect places, and his receivers, you know, uh, bounced off their hands a couple times, turned to an interception, uh, which looks bad on his numbers. But in reality, it wasn't on him. So how much can you really depend on the on this crew of wide receivers that the Packers have? You know, especially when you look at the Viking side of the ball, and they've got weapons galore. I'm talking about Cook, Thielen, and, and uh, you know, it, it just – it feels like a trap game, but I have a really hard time betting against Aaron Rodgers. So, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to get a little conservative. I'm going to put 100 on the Packers minus five, minus one and a half. All right. So aggressive Packers play early to see what they go. Uh, you know, I think I want to take the Vikings, but everything in my head says, do not take this team. Just mark them as a black and never take this team and just watch and see what you get uh, because it's just too many years and too many signs of every game that they should win or should come out and show me something. Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. yeah listen, I've they called them Jekyll and Hyde for like the last five years. And, and, you know, when I was looking at their numbers, I mean, over the last five, they went three and two. Both of their losses were to playoff teams, Green Bay and the Rams. Yeah. Uh, it just – it's a Jekyll and Hyde team. They look really good against mediocre competition, and they look pretty bad against elite competition. And, and the other thing is everybody always gets their numbers. Everybody has all these guys in fantasy. All of them are good in fantasy, even cousins. It's just like it's hard to sort of separate game from stats that you see uh, where, you know, Cook is an elite, Thielen is an elite, Jefferson is elite, the tight end is elite, the quarterback is elite, and it's just like one of those where how do they not translate to win games, but it doesn't translate to win games, and I just, I had to stay away. I had one play, uh, two plays on this game. The one thing I am going to play is the under. Uh, 47, like you said, I, I think Green Bay is going to sort of switch their personality a little bit, which they had already ha done it a little bit. Uh, but I think they're going to go more into it and be a defensive run first type of team. And I, I think they'll shorten this game. Minnesota, I, I know they've been talking big about how they're going to be this aggressive, fast-paced offense. But honestly, I, I think you have Cook back there, and you're going to end up being a, a, you know, a running team as well. So I think that number at 47, I, I think that's a bit high. I think this is a pretty low scoring game. Uh, so I like the under 147 at 125. And then uh, A.J. Dillon, over two and a half receptions here. Uh, I, I think uh, with Lazard ending up on the injury list, I, I know they say he's going to play, but I, I don't think he'll be fully healthy. So I think that even goes more to where they're going to use Jones and Dylan more as their, you know, pass catchers, quick passes out of the backfield. So I like AJ Dylan over that two and a half receptions at plus 130. So you're getting a little bit uh, of plus value on that. So I like AJ Dylan over two and a half receptions at plus 130 for 125 as well. Those are the only two plays I have on that one. So the under and the uh, AJ Dylan two and a half. And I'll just watch this game and, and see what we sort of get out of the Green Bay. I think I'm more interested to see what we get out of Green Bay than I am Minnesota because I'm pretty sure. I think Minnesota is, uh, yeah, I think Minnesota, we, we know what we're getting from Minnesota. And, yeah. and as I mentioned earlier, they've, the question is, is Green Bay still an elite team? Because yes. if they are, then Minnesota's going to lose this game. Yeah. Uh, and if Green Bay is just mediocre, then the Vikings have a shot. Yeah, definitely so. All right. Uh, I, I'm curious for your take on this one because – Basically, I have no clue. The Giants go to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Titans are five and a half point favorites on this one. Uh, you know, I just <laughs> don't know what either of these teams are. Totals at 44, so it sits basically at a middle total for an NFL game. The number sits at five and a half, which is basically a middle number for an NFL game. How are you handicapping this game? Because basically I don't know what to expect from either team. You know, I, I laugh because uh, yeah, I, I always write little notes on, on these games here. Uh, just to, if I wanted to kind of summarize something really quick. And it says no pick, but it smells like an upset. But who's playing wide receiver for New York? Uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I really had an inkling that uh, this was smelling like an upset. Um, and I'm, 
I kind of like what New York did for, uh, you know, during the off season, but is it enough to get over the hump and beat this Tennessee team? I know that they don't have AJ Brown anymore. And I know all, all the drama with you know, last season with, you know, them getting ousted in the playoffs. Uh, but I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Tennessee has been consistently average, at least, you know, if not good average uh, over the last, what, 10 years. Yeah. So I, I find it really hard to find it within myself to take anything within this game. Um, I think this is more of a barometer for Tennessee here. Uh, uh, you put them up against a Giants team that's not supposed to be good, and you see how they do. And if they can come out and dominate, then I think we're going to get a, a similar type of season from Tennessee that we're used to. Uh, but if they somehow manage to lose this game, then I think everything is up in the air. Uh, going from you know the quarterback's uh, tenure with that team to – the wide receivers, uh, are they going to be a clutch for, I don't know. I, again, I, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to watch this game, hopefully not in its entirety, but I, I'm going to watch and I'm going to try and pay attention. I, I have no play in this. Yeah. You know, I, I was on your line about the upset, but then, you know, you just look at the Giants and you're like, Ugh. Why would I take this team to beat anyone? Uh, so I, I just I couldn't grab it there. So what I did is, if the Giants are going to win, it's probably because Saquon Barkley has a good game. So basically, I just made a couple plays on Saquon Barkley. So Smart. I had Saquon Barkley anytime touchdown plus one thirty-five. I have Saquon Barkley first touchdown at eight fifty, and then I have Saquon Barkley at two plus touchdowns at plus 900. If the Giants like are going to win, Saquon Barkley probably needs at least two touchdowns. So nine to one there, you're getting more value and he can have two touchdowns and the crappy Giants can still lose. And I mean, not to mention the fact that Kayvon uh, Thibodeau is questionable. Um, Sterling Shepard's questionable. I mean, it's just uh, this team, which didn't have a lot of weapons to begin with uh, and their main weapons are always getting hurt. I, I I'm totally with you there. If I had to put anything on this game, it would definitely be on uh, the on the position players. Yeah, that's about all I can give in this one because I have no clue what I'm getting from either side, <laughs> uh, defensively, offensively, uh, game plan wise. Uh, this one, I don't know if it'll be pretty to watch, but uh, I'll definitely have to see what these two teams look like. Uh, next, we can up, put dynamite on it. Yeah, well, well he's definitely going to watch. Uh, but we probably won't get an unbiased opinion. Uh, we'll probably get news about the great routes that uh, the rookie receivers were running or something, though they end up with like zero catches. All right, let's go to Kansas City Chiefs minus three and a half versus the Arizona Cardinals. Um, that line jumped, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, that one, I, I looked today and it was up to six. So uh, I didn't like it at three and a half. I certainly don't like it at six. And then also looking at all the sort of player and team props, everything was so juiced for the Chiefs that I just couldn't, uh, you know, jump on that. So I basically have no plays here for the Kansas City Chiefs because I think the Chiefs will win this game, but I didn't like three and a half. I certainly don't like six. I have no clue what Arizona's going to be. I think they're going to be bad, but they have this weird little thing where they get off to hot starts, but there's no DeAndre Hopkins. So that makes me a little nervous on the hot starts. So uh, what do you make of this game? I, I just, I have no plays in this one, so I'm a stay away. I think the Chiefs come out and put it on Cardinals, but I'm not real bullish on that aggressive take. If you were to tell me that the Chiefs are going to win this game by multiple touchdowns, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I'll start off by saying that. Even with that being said, I, I don't like the six-point spread. I, I didn't like the three-and-a-half-point spread. Now, if it would have been two-and-a-half, which I believe, I understand it's way too low for a Kansas City Chief team that was just in the uh, in the AFC Championship game. Uh, I, I get all that, and especially with no Hopkins. But I, I don't know, man. I... I I have complete confidence that this that this Chiefs team is going to find their rhythm, especially as the season progresses. Yeah, you know we we had questions about them last season, uh, probably about two thirds of the way in, and then they completely turned it around and, and showed us why they're always one of the favorites to go all the way. I just I just can't see a play in this one. I, I the the few Chief bets that I thought about taking 
just didn't have enough value in there yeah. for me, uh, which is why I just stayed away from everything. Yeah, I, I think that's where I leaned is I, I don't know what to do with the Cardinals, so I totally just sort of wiped them out. The few Chiefs bets that I liked, I just thought, well, that's, you know, you're taxing me here, here, and here for value because you think the Chiefs are really good. You know, if this was, say, you know, the Carolina Panthers, they wouldn't tax it as much. And I just I just can't be real aggressive on the Chiefs if those numbers are going to stay where they are. So I end up with nothing in this game. I certainly will tune in to see uh, what the Chiefs look like and how the new weapons fit, but uh, I just couldn't make a bet anywhere on this game. And then even the total, 53 and a half, where yeah. I'm like, well, I'm definitely not taking that over, but I certainly am not taking an over in an Arizona Cardinal Kansas, uh, an, an under, under in, yeah. in a Kansas City Chiefs Arizona Cardinals game, because this might be 60, uh, you know, by halftime. So it, it was just, this game is a, a cross off for me. All right, let's move to the uh, Sunday night game. Buccaneers, Cowboys. A lot of storylines flowing in this one. Uh, Cowboys, two and a half point dogs at home in this one. Uh, Bucks, what do you make of this game? Are you aggressive on one side or the other uh, here? Bucks, Cowboys. I'll tell you what, I, I, I kind of like the Bucks here. And it's not so much because I think that Tom Brady is going to come back and do what Tom Brady does. It's more of a, I'm not sure I believe in Dallas anymore. I, I don't like the moves that they're making. I think that they're playing more for a future build that they're that they're looking at. Um, they let go of their, of their top wide receiver. Uh, they pay, the, the in my opinion, the more worn down uh, running back in, in their death chart. And they're banking all their money that somehow this is going to work and the defense is going to improve based off what it did last season. I, I can tell you right now, if I had to put money on anything, I would put it on the Cowboys defense being slightly worse because the reason why they were so good last year was because of the turnovers. There's no way you can keep up that, that same margin of turnovers that they had all season long. Um, and again, the Bucks. There's they made it to the championship game. There's a reason why they well, not the championship game. They made it to the uh, the um, conference. Well, it went up against the Rams. Yes. Uh, right before the championship game be between the Niners and the Rams. And um, I don't know, man. It's Brady. I, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take anything here. I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip it. I'm gonna watch this game uh, just because I want to see what each team brings to the table. But I hope I'm wrong on the Cowboys. They're exciting to go up against. They're exciting to watch. But I really think that, you know, this roller coaster ride that they were on, I think it's starting to head down now. And I think that uh, people are going to start really disliking what they see just based off the things I've seen. Well, I'm going to shock you a little bit. I oh, ride gosh. the Dallas Cowboys plus the two and a half here. I, I think. Give me, tell me why. <laughs> I, I, need, I, need, I need to know why. Because I, I was sitting there breaking my head. I'm like. My, the question wasn't even do I take the Cowboys. The question was more do I think Tom Brady can come out and do it again? You know, especially with the injuries at the wide receiver position. And I'm like, oh, he's got Jones, and you know, Evans might be a little little sore, but I think he'll be okay. I, I just couldn't do it. But again, none of these questions were based off the Cowboys because again, I think the Cowboys are trending in the wrong direction. Uh, again, just my opinion. But what what did you see? Well, I, I agree. I think the Cowboys are trending in the wrong direction. The other thing I see is I think the Bucks are trending in the wrong direction. So I, I think an opening night, night game in Dallas, uh, I, I know that stadium doesn't hold the same sort of home field advantage uh, that, you know, the older ones did. It's more a, you know, theme park stadium than a, you know, a home field stadium. But I think opening night in Dallas gives them a slight little boost. And honestly, I, I'm just... I'm a little concerned by the Tampa Bay Bucks. I'm concerned along their offensive line. The one thing we know the Dallas Cowboys front line can do is, is rush the passer. So I think they get to Brady a little bit. I'm concerned about the weapons on the Tampa Bay Bucks, both Gage and Godwin, not really healthy. So that just leaves Mike Evans out there on the outside. Um, I, I don't know what to make of the Bucks running game, you know, there are photos of different varieties of Laird Fournette and uh, his size and weight. Uh, you know, 
photos are photos. Those can be manipulated. You can take them at different angles. But I, I can I can vouch for that. Every <laughs> single picture that's ever been taken of me has been modified to make me look bad. So, yes, I agree that maybe Fournette isn't quite as, let's just say, husky as he might <laughs> appear to be. But I do think he might be a little husky. So I don't know if they're going to get the run game that – they think they're going to get, especially along that offensive line. I don't know what to make of the Cowboys' offense. I do think Tampa Bay's defense will still be good and solid. They probably won't be able to run the ball very well with Vita Vea sitting in that middle. Uh, but I do think you take Sue out of that middle, it, it hurts them a little bit. So I think this will be a tight, close game. Uh, and I think the Cowboys just cover these two and a half points. Uh, I think it's more a play on what I think might be coming for Tampa Bay here than it is a play on the Dallas Cowboys more than anything. So, so basically, you just approached it the way that I was thinking about approaching the Bucks. Yes, uh, you just flipped it. Yeah, I think we just flipped it. We both have sort of. I think we both think these two teams are trending down. It's just probably which one we think is probably on a faster peak to the trend down and which one's a little higher up the hill than on the and trend not, down here. And it's not even that I hate your pick. I, I don't hate it. I, I mean, I completely understand it. It's just, I just can't bring myself to bet against Brady, yeah. especially when it's that tight. Yeah, I understand. And, you know, if we're going into a game with one possession to decide it, uh, judging from the way the Cowboys game ended in the playoffs last year. <laughs> oh, I just watched a replay of that yesterday. That was horrible. I, I I'm not sure, uh, really, uh, that that's where we want to be in. But even then, it, it maybe the Cowboys are leading and the Bucks need to get in position for a field goal. Win by one or two points, you still get the cover with the two-and-a-half-point spread here. Uh, the other bet I had in this is Dalton Schultz, anytime touchdown, plus 170. Thought there was pretty good value there. Uh especially down in the red zone with, uh, you know, a couple of the Cowboys receivers out. So, you know, really only C.D. Lamb. On the outside, I think Schultz might get a, a couple looks down uh, in and around the red zone here, even with the Tampa Bay Bucks uh, linebackers. Uh, pretty solid in coverage. So that's the way I, I, I'm seeing that one. You lean a little bit more Tampa. I lean a little bit more Dallas. I just I like the night game at home on that one. All right, let's move to the Monday night game. Uh, Denver Broncos at Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Denver Broncos are a six and a half point favorite on the road here in Seattle. Total sits at 44 and a half. What do you make of this one? Does Russ come in here and dominate? Uh, does Seattle have a little something on a Monday night, uh, you know, home field here? How do you think this thing plays out? I, I honestly have no clue how it's going to play out. As you know, that I'm one of the uh, bigger uh, Russell Wilson I'm not going to say fan because uh, he played against my team and he played really well against my team for many, many years, but uh, I'm more of a supporter. Uh, I I understand that, you know, he's not super dynamic with everything he does, but I, I think that one of the one of his biggest traits is he can make magic happen. I've said this several times uh, when speaking about Russell Wilson, and I don't know. I feel like he's going to he's gonna come out with a vengeance. He's going to try and prove something to his team, uh, the team that basically sent him away and said, we're going to rebuild. You don't have what it takes anymore. Uh, and we'll see. Um, I, I think this this uh, Broncos team is leaps and bounds better than Seattle is, and, and I don't see a way where Seattle can keep up with it unless Penny goes off and just has a monster game. That's the only way that I can see this being close. But even even then, uh, you know, the, Bron the Broncos linebackers are they're no slouches. They're they, they're pretty stout. Uh, I know they're not the best. They don't have the best front seven, but they're pretty stout, especially up front. So I think Denver can do enough defensively to slow down Penny, even though I really like Penny. Um, the question is, can Russell Wilson, uh, you know, bring back some of that magic that he's known for and, and show his previous team? Uh, you know, they should have never let him go. Uh, I kind of like the Broncos here at minus six and a half. But I'm not taking a play on this just because of how uh, how wide that spread is. Yeah, I, I think the spread's a little too big. I, I think, if anything, this is one of those where, you know, it, it's a close game going into the fourth quarter, and maybe the Broncos make a drive uh, to win this. So I, I don't really like the six-and-a-half number there, but I, I'm not quite aggressive enough on the Seahawks side of things to really take that six-and-a-half 
Point number, uh, you, you mentioned it, uh, Penny would be the way. But I also think this game probably goes sort of defensively and run game for both. I don't think either are going to be real aggressive I can see that. Uh, you know, out the start. So I, I do think this will be a, a pretty close game. Maybe uh, there's a play in, like, first half if you like the Seahawks uh, as both teams sort of try to find – their rhythm and you get a little value there first half Seahawks if you if you like the Seahawks if you're leaning Seahawks it might be better value to take them first half uh, than the full game where the Broncos sort of work things out I don't have anything other than a couple you know individual plays uh, Penny anytime touchdown plus 160 I do think that's really good value I, I don't think the Broncos are going to shut out the Seahawks so uh, I, I do think they run one in there and then uh, two plus touchdowns for Penny at 12 to 1 so I, I like that value uh as well on that and i'm just curious to see uh what sort of team the broncos are are they going to sort of be a run first uh you know defensive team or are they going to do the weird thing where you know let russ cook uh you know these <laughs> let russ cook teams haven't been as successful as those old seattle teams where basically they ran the ball played defense and let russ win the game at the end uh those teams are the ones that made championship games and super bowls uh the let russ cook teams won nine ten games and then lost in the first and second round of the playoffs so I, I'm curious what side the Broncos come out and, and sort of play this game on. What was that line uh, from that photo shoot with Russell Wilson? Broncos Nation, let's ride. <laughs> Broncos Nation, let's ride. All right. So those are our bets uh, on the game. I got a couple teasers and parlays I want to get into uh, to wrap up my bets on the week. Uh, I have the uh, 6.3 team teaser that basically uh, everybody in the world has. Um Baltimore I don't. Win. I want to hear it. Yeah. Well, you and the rest of the world, everybody's probably going to have this and everybody's probably going to lose money on it. Vegas is probably lapping up and laughing, but uh, six point team teaser. Ravens makes it minus one. San Francisco makes it minus one. Kansas City makes it a pick em. So six point three team teaser at plus 160. Uh, Ravens. Niners, Chiefs, I got 500 on that one. So uh, I look forward to one of those teams screwing me over and uh, not quite uh, fulfilling uh, just to win outright. Uh, It'll probably be the Chiefs after what you said about them. Yes, I know. Uh, then I have a three-team 10-point teaser at minus 120. <laughs> so that puts the Seahawks at plus 16 and a half, the Giants at plus 15 and a half, and the Pittsburgh Steelers at plus 16 and a half. So a uh, lot of value in the uh, three-team 10-point teaser that's at minus 120. I got 250 at that. All right. Then I got a couple parlays. You mentioned uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars and, and the money line. I'm going to go a little further. I moved the Ooh. Jacksonville Jaguars alternate line to minus three. So that made it 160. And then I took Seattle Seahawks plus 210 money line. That made Ooh. it a seven to one parlay. So plus 706 on that two team parlay. Jags minus three, Seahawks plus 210. I put 125 on that two team parlay. I have a three leg parlay of Joe Flacco under 233 and a half passing yards, Baker Mayfield over 217 and a half passing yards, Trevor Lawrence over 237 and a half passing yards. That is plus 553 on that three team parlay. I have 6250 on that one. I may need you to send me that one later on. By I'll way. send you that one later on. All right. You'll like this one. Two leg parlay. Plus 288 value. You got Russell Wilson over one and a half passing touchdowns. You got Trevor Lawrence over one and a half passing touchdowns. So two touchdowns passing for each plus 288, almost three to one value on that one. I got 125 on uh, that uh, two leg parlay. All I right. like that one. You ready for this one? Three leg Let's parlay plus 506. Longest completions. So I got Mac Jones under. 35 and a half on longest completions. Tom Brady under 38 and a half on longest completions. And then Russell Wilson over 36 and a half on longest completions. So uh, that one plays plus 506 on a three leg parlay. Under on Jones, 35 and a half. Under on Brady, 38 and a half. Over on Wilson, 36 and a half. 
All right, let's go to another three-leg parlay at plus 540. I got Suenko on Barkley over 55 and a half rushing yards. Aaron Jones over 51 and a half rushing yards. And then the wild card one. Uh, this is the one I didn't like in the group, but uh, I couldn't find another one I really liked. Trey Lance over 39 and a half rushing yards. So it can happen. Yeah. I, He's got I, legs. I really like those first two. So if you want a little less value, I, I think you squash out the Trey Lance one and just do. Barkley and Jones over 51 and over 55 and a half. You could get a little bit very value there, but I, I wanted to put that one at a three and get that plus 540. Hey, listen, I, I really like, I, you know, I know it, it, it's your little hesitant about it, but that Trey Lance one, Chicago, man, they, they're known for trying to get after the quarterback. They got, they got a pretty decent pass rush. And if they, if they try to come around the quarters, Trey Lance is going to go right down the middle, man. So I, I kind of like that one. I think that's what I was looking at that, Maybe he might hit one or two, you know, 15, 16 long ones, and then maybe one or two more where he's, you know, four or five scrambles out of bounds, and he hits that over 40. So uh, that's why I made it three, but also you could scoot that down. I, I think Barkley, Aaron Jones, over 51, over 55, uh, probably more likely to hit than all three, but uh, I, I like that value at plus 540 on that one. Uh, next up. Three-leg parlay, Mo Alley Cox, over 23 and a half yards receiving. Christian Kirk, over 55 and a half yards receiving. And Mike Williams, over 56 and a half yards receiving. Uh, I really like that one. Probably the Alley Cox is the one that's in between. But I think with the Colts and, and the way Matt Ryan plays, I think he'll chuck down uh, to the, uh, you know, uh, tight end pretty, pretty quick. Uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor isn't as... Uh, great as a pass catcher he's improved but they usually put in like a Heinz or, or something like that as the pass catcher so I look for Mo Alley Cox to get a handful of those uh dump downs and then my last one two late parlay at plus 285 uh Pittman over five and a half receptions Pitts over uh four and a half receptions so plus 285 on that one right oh. That's what I have for my bets on the week. Uh, what games are you looking forward to most uh, for week one here? Well, I got to be honest with you, the game are that I was looking to the, the most. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I don't I don't want to watch the replay of that. No, um, I'm really interested in a couple things. Um, one, I want to see how the Cowboys look without uh, with the, without Amari Cooper. Uh, I want to see how uh, this Arizona team looks like without Hopkins. Um, I want to see how the Packers look without Devontae Adams. And obviously, those guys that move to other teams, I want to see how those teams look with the addition of those wide receivers. So uh, I'll be looking for a lot of the changes that happened during the offseason this first week. Um, and I'll definitely have more picks coming into second week. So uh, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for it. Yeah, uh, Tampa Bay, Dallas, really looking forward to, uh, you know, Green Bay, Minnesota. I, I'm. I think I'm most interested just to see what those teams look like and, and what we get. And, and then lastly, I, I just think, uh, you know, I, I want to see the steelers Bengals game because I want to see what the Bengals look like coming back, and, and I want to see what the Steelers look like now that the Ben Roethlisberger era is over it and sort of get a gauge if the Steelers need to, you know, it, maybe go into a little bit of a rebuild here or sort of stay status quo. They, I think the last couple of years they've been trying to rebuild, at, you know, on the quick and fly as they bring in pieces as the older guys go. So those are the three games I'm really looking forward to. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and follow all our Green Light Network shows. We got our college football uh, pick show as well on the network up now uh you can still check out our uh our preview show uh you probably want to hold on to all those uh judging by uh, the game that might be uh all you get for a while on the uh ram super bowl uh, front for uh, that's for okay uh, i'm still i'm still on cloud nine so no big deal yeah and then in 20 years you'll be one of those weirdos wearing a uh, 20 year old Super Bowl champions. Uh, hey, listen, that's how long it took for us to get our second one. So, you know, it's, it's right on par. Yeah.